Hello everyone, my name is Anthony Coleman and I'm a trainer here at Pragmatic Works where we do everything from on-demand learning to boot camps to hackathons, even this awesome YouTube channel. So if you're new here, please feel free to subscribe and if you like the content, go ahead and hit the like button as well. By subscribing, you'll be up to date with all of the content that we post here at Pragmatic Works, which we like to do at least two to three times per week. What I'd like to do is introduce you to a new series that we're building here on YouTube, and that is our YouTube SSIS series. Now, you may be thinking, hmm, I've heard that song before. Isn't that an older technology? Well, yes. SSIS is an older technology, but it's still strong and prevalent in a lot of environments. So with all of the data that's come in in the last 10 years, data has come in from a variety of different places. And I think it's safe to say that companies have found a way to handle that data. So data is not going away for a very long time. What I'd like to do is introduce you to or reintroduce you to an oldie but goodie SQL Server Integration Services, which is also known as SSIS. Okay, so we're in Visual Studio, but before we get started, let's talk about what SSIS is and why SSIS is so important. SSIS stands for SQL Server Integration Services, and SSIS is Microsoft's ETL tool. ETL stands for Extract, transform and load. What that means is users can extract or pull data from a variety of different sources, including SharePoint, Excel, SQL Server, CSV files, and then they can take that data and then they can apply different transformations or business rules to that data. So you may need to add a new column, change a data type, or even just clean the data so that it's ready for reporting. After the data is clean, you can then load that data into a variety of different destinations, including Excel, SQL Server, and more specifically, a data warehouse. Now that we know what SSIS is and why SSIS is important, let's go ahead and talk about Visual Studio. For this series, if you want to follow along, I have a link to the applications that I'll be using below. I'll be using Visual Studio 2019 Community Edition. I've also installed SQL Server Data Tools. I'll also have SQL Server 2019 Developer Edition. And I've installed SQL Server Management Studio 2019. And I've downloaded and installed the AdventureWorks 2019, as well as AdventureWorks DW 2019 databases that you see here. The first thing that I'm going to do is open Visual Studio, and I'm going to create a new project. To create a new project, I'm gonna go down here to the bottom right. But before we do that, it's important to understand the difference between a solution and a project when working with business intelligence tools. So we'll take a look. So we have the idea of a solution and a project. And I'm going to go ahead and draw this big box here. And this box is going to represent the new solution that we're going to create. So when we create a new solution, we're actually going to create a brand new project inside of our solution. So the project that we're going to create is going to be our SSIS project. A unit of work inside of an SSIS project is going to be an SSIS package. Now inside of this SSIS project, we can have multiple packages. We can also have multiple projects inside of a single solution. So let's say, for instance, I wanted to create a analysis services project. I could go ahead and create that as well. So I can have an SSIS project under one solution, and I could also have an SSAS project underneath the same solution as well. 
The unit of work for an analysis services project is a cube, but we cannot forget about reporting services either. So maybe I wanted to have a reporting services project in the solution. I would go ahead and create that as well. So this would be our SSRS project. And inside of this SSRS project, we would have our SSRS reports. So the cool thing about this is that we can have multiple projects underneath one solution. So we can have all of these projects under the same hood. And if I wanted to, I could even add an additional SSIS project here. And maybe I had a data warehousing project that I wanted to have my data warehousing objects in. I could do that here as well. So this would also have SSI packages. So this is the difference between a solution and a project. A solution is a container for projects. A solution can have multiple projects, but a project is a container for SSIS packages, cubes, as well as reports. All right, we're in SSIS and it's time to do a tour of the environment. It looks like we have a lot of windows open here. I'm going to start by going to the Getting Started tab. And then I'm just going to hit the X here, and then I'm going to close this tab. And the reason why I'm going to do this is because I want to illustrate how to get some of the tabs back or some of the windows back that you may have accidentally closed or may have accidentally closed on their own. So if we wanted to bring back that Getting Started tab, we can go to View and we could select any of these options here and then we'd be able to view that window. For the Getting Started tab, I'm gonna to go to Other Windows and I'm just gonna to go to Getting Started and when I select Getting Started, it comes back. So this is how you can add or remove windows from your environment. I'm gonna go ahead, I'm just gonna X out of that one more time but this is the way that I like to have my environment set up. On the left, I have SSIS Toolbox here. And then on the right, I have my Solution Explorer. And I also have the Properties tab, which is next to Solution Explorer. If you look at SSIS, one thing to keep in mind is that these are detachable. So if I wanted to arrange my SSIS environment in another way, I can drag and drop these and place them in another area. I can add it to this icon here. And now I have my Solution Explorer up top. I can grab it. I can add it to the bottom down here if I want it. Now my Solution Explorer is at the bottom. If I wanted to set it back to where it was, I can just drag and drop it on this icon right here. So this is how we can customize the way that our environment looks. If I look over at the SSIS toolbox, you can see that it may look a little different from yours, and that's possibly because I have the common task collapse. If I expanded these, however, we would get an opportunity to see all of the tasks that are available for us to use in the control flow. If I click on one, down below, I get an explanation of what that task does. So file system task, for instance, I can see that it performs operations on files and directories in the file system. Over on the right, I have my Solution Explorer. The Solution Explorer helps organize the projects that are in our solution. So if I minimize this project here, we can see that we have our solution, which is intro to SSIS. And I also have my project, which is called intro to SSIS. If I had multiple projects inside of this intro to SSIS solution, I would be able to see those here. If I go ahead and I expand our intro to SSIS project, we have a couple of objects here. So you see that we have our project parameters here, but we also have connection managers, and then we also have our SSIS packages. So SSIS packages, are found here in our projects. So this is a brief overview of SSIS. Hopefully you had an opportunity to see how SSIS can be helpful in your environment. In upcoming videos, we'll talk about the connection managers, 
We'll talk about the difference between the control flow and data flow. We'll build out our first packages and we'll even get into deploying packages and the difference between package and project deployment models. If you like this series or this video, please go ahead and hit the subscribe button. If you're not already subscribed and go ahead and hit the like button. If you want formal training, we do have classes on our ODL where you will have instructors that walk you through the different module resources and give you step-by-step -step instructions on how to take your understanding to an even higher level. Hopefully I'll see you in the next SSIS YouTube video.